My name's Emma. Uh, I run the woodwork and the metal shop here at the Anglevic and I'm responsible for building scen scenery. Uh, I manage and run the workshops and I'm also responsible for uh, getting the scenery built, uh, ordering materials, uh, arranging labour, um, sourcing and costing. We've got a variety of tools within our department ranging from basic hand tools for marking out and measuring, going into uh, uh, battery power tools like your drills, uh, your jigsaws, uh, grinders and then going into more industrial type machinery like uh, the cross cut and the table saw and the welders and metal cutting machinery. Uh, we've got two, two main uh, big saws within our wood department. Uh, we've got a cross cut that you use for cutting down lengths of timber or just ripping across uh, a, a material and then we've got a table saw that you can set so you end up doing rips of sheet material, which we use. Um, yeah, it's basically a big saw that you either pull across or you feed the material into. We've got some, the usual, the usual suspects that we use for, for building scenery. Uh, uh, timber, which is a pine, and then we go into the sheet materials that can vary from MDF to ply, and that can be fire resistant or moisture resistant. Um, and then going into metal shop, you've got the stock sizes of the ERW tubing that we use, and then any meshes or grills or grates and things like that that we use. Um, a lot of it depends on the show. Sometimes it will require a, a certain type of material or something that we might not usually stock, whether it's a, a polycarbonate or a, a twin wall that you can, you can get at B&Q just depends on the finishes and what it requires. Um, typically we build everything mainly out of um, two by one framework or two by two um, and also use ply in a variety of different forms because you can get it down from kind of say two mil to 18 mil. It comes in a variety of different sizes in terms of board sizes um, which enables you to kind of make a variety of different things. Um, ply is quite a strong structure given its makeup. It's made up of layers that are glued on top of each other. Um, so then if you're using 18 mil, you can make a box without the need for any framework, which also does save money in the longer term, um, that, that is then structural to be able to be stood on and to be used. Um, here we use, majority of tools that we use are kind of very much off the shelf in terms of jigsaws, chop saws, table saws, um, hand tools and hammers, um, screwdrivers, etc. And we have a number of kind of different makes and models of those, but it's, it's, it's fairly basic because the kind of construction work that we do for our, our productions is kind of, is quite old fashioned construction. We don't kind of do much in terms of the way of metal work. We tend, if we build, it's made out of wood. A lot of it, a lot of it depends on, on the design. Yeah. And that's obviously a primary concern of ours. It's like, are we going to actually be able to achieve what they want it to look like? Mm -hmm. And then you've got to move into, as soon as you've got that and you can find out the properties that you're looking for in material, you're then having to add on more properties in terms of health and safety. So whether it's fire resistant or whether people are walking on it and that will tell you how thick the material needs to be and what kind of structure you need under it. Well, let's take this for example. Underneath here, you've got basically a timber framework and then you've got a ply on top. Now, I went with ply because it's got a much uh, stronger structure in it, so I don't need as many uh, formers underneath to, to support it over an MDF. And it's like, I'm not going for, I wasn't going for a finish because you can see it's completely textured. So you don't need a smooth surface for like MDF and the ply, you can see the grain through it. So uh, those are the considerations for this. And then it was like, well, what thickness does it need to be? How many people are going to be walking across this? How much weight is it going to take? Um, and ply came up as, as the best material for that job. Um, as I said, we're quite traditional. Um, it's, um, and the majority of that's down to uh, the skill sets of um, you know, the staff that we employ in terms of how we deliver uh, our productions and what materials we, we decide to make it from. Um, that being said, I say ply comes in a variety of different forms. Um, there are other there is other timber out there that can be used to similar effect, but they have as much kind of, or if not sometimes more kind of limitations. If you're using something, say hardboard, which is basically like a piece of cardboard, 
that breaks quite easily, it's not very durable, it doesn't kind of last for a long time. Um, so you find that you constantly have to replace. It is cheap, but also, so, but so when going through the process, you've got to think about what the materials and why you're going to use them and what the end result is going to be. If you are covering, say, a fascia of a side of stage and that is made out of hardboard and the actors or performers are up and down on that stage a number of times, then the likelihood is they're going to put their foot through that quite quickly because of its composition. If it was something that's ply, it's made of layers, it's got a bit more strength to it, it's going to last a bit longer. Um, we tend not to use MDF, mainly because of the, the makeup of it, the dust that it gives off, it's made up of a, a variety of kind of different materials all kind of lumped together um, in one form, so it doesn't necessarily all have the same kind of structural capabilities of, say, ply or something that's build, built around a frame. Um, if you're doing something with water and it gets wet, it tends to disintegrate quite quickly, but also because it's made up of, of kind of component parts, it, if you, again, if you catch it or you knock it against something, it breaks into two very, very quickly. I mean, what we'd really love to do is start to move into a lot of the new Enviro boards that they're bringing out in, in terms of it's already a recycled material and that it's already fireproof and you can route it, you can cut it, you can finish it the same as you would with any wood sheeting. It's just too expensive. You can't you can't fund a show or or build a set with that yet because it's it hasn't yet come down. I mean the technology's there to produce these boards, you just can't afford it. Yeah. But um, yeah, so costing can be a, quite a big implication, yeah. and it just depends what it's for. It's like you could, for instance, for a floor, you could have a really nice finish with a with a birch, and that's lovely material to work with, but it's three times more expensive than going with an MDF floor. So. There you go. And obviously, one of the biggest jumps for us was in, in drafting and, and having things like AutoCAD and Vectorworks and, and all of that to be able to bring in a new level of accuracy that you could never really get on, a, on just a hand-drawn uh, drawing. So, yeah, always evolving, always moving. <laughs>